So you want your internet to be faster and have less ping? Well, you've heard about MTU packet size, our maximum transmission unit, and that that maybe can help speed up your internet connection. So let's go into how you find out. It's a very simple method to find out exactly what your optimal based off your actual location and your ISP, and then how you can set that up on your home network so that you can optimize this for yourself. Now I'm going to demo this actually with T-Mobile Home Internet. Here's one of their gateways. This is the Arcadia one. I'm actually going to be connected through the Nokia one. But again, this actually applies to any ISP out there, cable, satellite, uh, Starlink, any of those still um, have the same process. So something to know about MTU and packet size is the ISPs automatically pick what they think is the best already. And that's in the settings in the gateway or the modem that they give you, but you can override it. So think about packet size as just like a box, like a package. And if you have a large package and it's going into a big UPS truck um, and it fits just fine, great, you know, it fits and it ships. If your box is too big and maybe you have a USPS postal truck come, it doesn't fit in there, now you have to cut that package in half and split it and ship it and then they have to put it back together once it gets to the um, final destination. So it's the same kind of concept here with these packets. These are data packets. And whenever you have to split them, then that might add latency and it speed it uh, slows down your speed. It's less efficient to transfer that stuff when you have to assemble it and disassemble it, as well as things that are very sensitive to fragmentation, things like VPN especially, um, even voice over IP, or other methods actually might completely fail if your MTU packet sizing is not set up correctly. So that's why it's important. But you know for most people, the default settings work, but there are ways to optimize it. So let's go into my computer, show you step by step very easily how you can go through yourself. And again, this is gonna be unique to each person. So I can't tell you exactly what your optimal setting is. It's gonna vary by a lot of parameters. So let's go in there, just follow me along on your computer and we'll see what your settings are. And before we get too far, I do want to say this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. And I do want to thank you for tuning in and watching. And if you like this content, do consider giving me the thumbs up button just down below. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That really does help out and I appreciate it. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is go here to Windows and type in CMD or Command Prompt and hit Enter. That's going to bring up a new window here. And... Don't get too scared away, guys. I'm going to give you copy and paste things. They're in the video description down below. So if you expand the description down below this video in YouTube, these text will be in there for you to copy and paste. So the first thing I want to talk about is the fact that um, the way MTU is set up, I mentioned that the ISPs always have the modem. They have the default settings in there. Um, kind of the universal default that's known is 1500, and that's the um, MTU packet size. But... A ISP might modify that, typically smaller MTU, uh, typically is not higher than the 1500 for these type of connections. The way it works is if you have your own router behind that modem, then that router can override what that ISP has set up. And again, if you have a computer, you can set up in your computer actually for each interface. So if you have an Ethernet uh, port and then you have a Wi-Fi, you can actually have different MTUs for each one. But your computer would then override what the router would have. So if you set your computer to a different one, and I actually do that for my VPN, so my VPN is set uh, really, it's a lot lower, and that then overrides anything that it sees down the line. So let's give you this command real fast to type in here to the command prompt, and this is just going to show you what all your interfaces on your computer are set to, I think this is a good check. You do want to make sure that you aren't overriding um, these settings that we're talking about um, doing here. So this one here shows that all of my interfaces are at 1500 for the MTU uh, packet size. And you can see that, you know, I'm currently using the, the Wi-Fi based off these bytes. All right, so that's just a sense check to understand where you're at. The next one we're going to do is um, to type in ping. So ping is, um, you know, check-in latency. It's basically sending a ping out to an address. And then you can send this to wherever you want. It can be to www.natertaterchannel.com or it can be uh, www.google.com, if I could spell. 
and then you're going to do a dash F and that is meaning that you cannot it will not fragment the packets it's going to lock them in and that means if it won't fragment them then it will fail to go through if the fragment or if the MTU packet size is too big and I'm going to do a dash L lowercase L it looks kind of like a one but it's it's not it's a L um, and then that is going to determine what the size of that packet is and like I said the default is this 1500 and you hit enter and now it's going to be pinging Google and you can see here it says the packet needs to be fragmented but we told it not to um, so it, may, it basically means it failed so all four of those ping commands were lost and that's not good so now I'm gonna encourage you to go down by maybe 10 maybe 20 at a time until you get to a, a place now I've already done this so I can cheat a little bit but let me just show you if I go down to uh, 1420 here so if you hit the um, up arrow and then you can hit the backspace and then you can just modify that last um, command which is the the packet size so I'm going down to 1420 and you can see here that I actually sort of got a reply and, you know it says it got a reply but it didn't give me um, the response which is which is kind of interesting um, but so I'm gonna keep going down smaller so I'm gonna go down another 10 and see what happens here and again I'm still getting fragments so let's keep going down I'm gonna just step down because I think I know what the answer is and I'm gonna do um, 1390 and here we go now I'm getting a reply each time and 0% loss and you can see your milliseconds there of uh, response time now I can go back up now and see if I add just two back to it do I still get a reply and it looks like yes so I do um, sometimes I don't um, so let me try going back up another two more so 1394 there we go so now I have fragmentation so somewhere around 1390 to 1392 but that is not my MTU size um, that's actually the maximum segmentation size and for an MTU you have to add some header information it's kind of complicated I don't even fully uh, understand or read, read up on it but basically it's 28 um, bytes that get added onto there so you need to add 28 to this number so for me I'm gonna pick this 1392 number as the biggest I can go so if I add 28 to that now I'm gonna be at 1420 so 1420 is my packet size that appears to be the best for this T-Mobile home internet. All right, so let me just go in here to my router. So for me personally, I have this Asus router set up. Uh, you might not have a router or you might not have one that has the ability to change the MTU size. So if that's the case, you really probably should um, use your computer to change that. But um, you really want all your devices to change to it. So really the best way is to have your own router and have it configured to set up this way. So uh, I'll put a link into uh, an ASUS router that I use, but um, you can look up your own to see if you can change the MTU packet size. Now, here is where um, mine is for the setting, and the default is going to be uh, the 1500. But just to make sure that that's where I'm at, I'm going to go ahead and force it to 1500 so I know that my router is commanding 1500 for my packet size so now that is complete and now I'm going to go to uh, speedtest.net and let's test this out and see what kind of speeds I get at this 1500 you know this is the default um, setup basically so we can see here now you do get variation on the speed test but I was just running tests and I was getting around this 200 um, megabits per second for download and let's see what I get it for upload. I think it was like 16 before. Um, okay, so there we go. Let me take a snippet of that just so we have it for reference. We'll throw it over here. All right, and then for safe measure, let's go ahead and run a fast.com. This is just another speed test that uses like uh, Netflix servers. So we're just going to run it and see what we get here on on it.
Okay, so now we have those two. So now I'm going to go in there and I'm going to change my packet size. So remember, I was at 1392 and I'm adding the 28. So now I'm at 1420 for my um, packet size. So let's get those applied. All right, so now let's go back and redo this speedtest.net and see what kind of difference we have. Now we're also going to look at the latency. Funny enough, it's at exactly the same ping. This is 48 milliseconds as it was before. Um, but you look there, you can see that you know right now we're about 10 to uh, yeah about 10 percent faster than we were before. And then for this upload, it looks like right now we're trending exactly the same speed. If we look at my ping, my ping before was at uh, for loaded ping. Um, it was at 426 for the download. Now it's 221. So that one actually got faster, but I've seen that change up and down. I really don't record this as a uh, improvement. And then you can see by my upload, again, it's actually worse for the upload loaded ping than it was before. And this time my upload actually got, got slower. If you were watching the curve there, it actually you know started about the same, but then it tapered down. So I'm getting a lot of inconsistency there. So when I look at just that right there, I would say that's not a market change. Let's see what the fast.com does. And, you know, so there's been some other channels out there that have covered, or there's people on line, Reddit, Facebook, whatever, that, that really um, say that their MTU packet size change has changed their settings and it's a must-have to do. The reason I haven't covered it to date is because I haven't seen it be a drastic change um, you know, I see as much variation in the speed, test to test, as I would see when I make this change. Sometimes it's faster, sometimes it's slower. It kind of varies, but I'm not seeing anything drastic. And here, just to to solidify my statement that the ping does not always get better, here, this one actually got a lot, low, um, a lot worse. So the loaded ping now is 671 milliseconds, whereas before it was 313. So... You know, this time it's twice as bad. In fact, the even the unloaded is worse now. So this just reinforces my point that for me, I haven't seen the MTU packet size make a huge difference. But there are people, and, and it is true that you are technically optimizing the packet size by doing this. I just haven't seen that really translate into a big improvement in my speed. The one caveat to that is for VPN. My VPN, it will not work unless I have the packet size down size all the way down to 1320 um, is actually what the packet size is set up for for my VPN. That's how I confirm that it works. Now, you actually risk, um, you know, you, you're actually, you can get too small where you actually are, again, slowing down your connection. But that is what I need to connect there. For you guys, you're more than welcome to check it out. You can adjust your packet size this way and um, you can see if it makes a big difference. If it does, put a comment down below. I'm interested to hear what others are actually experiencing because I've tried this a couple times, not just on T-Mobile, but actually Verizon and AT&T and others, and I've never really seen a drastic change in my performance.